So welcome, everyone. I'm very excited to be here. Um, it was interesting. Uh, about a year and a half ago in, in San Francisco at, at the Design Summit, networking was discussed as a line, a straight line between two VMs. We certainly come a very long way from there uh, with substantial use cases and, and, and uh, innovations um, in networking. And to talk about some of that, uh, we would have uh, the, the experts from both uh, Rackspace and uh, uh, Brocade Viada uh, here. Um, so I'm Sandeep Singh Kohli. I, uh, uh, I'm part of the product marketing uh, team at uh, Brocade. Um, Samir uh, Sashi, do you want to please introduce yourselves? Yeah, my name is Samir Satyam. I'm a product manager for public cloud networking at Rackspace. Uh, and I am responsible for onboarding or uh, introducing network services for our public cloud customers. Hi, uh, my name is Shashi Sastri. I'm the technical marketing engineer for Viada. Uh, my role at Viada spans from product development, uh, performance testing, uh, and also to validate customer solutions, uh, especially in the cloud service provider environment. Excellent. Uh, thank you so much for uh, taking the time. Uh, glad to uh, have you here. Um, really quickly, most of you know about uh, uh, Brocade's uh, market leadership in, in, this, in SAN. Uh, a few of you might not know about our uh, leadership in the IP uh, world. So, just hit a couple of points really quickly. Brocade was the first uh, to introduce uh, Ethernet fabrics uh, into the market. With our VCS plugin, we provided the first uh, fabric level orchestration. Uh, with the network function virtualization, uh, our Brocade Viata V router uh, has, uh, with market penetration, uh, it's, it's, it's leading in market penetration if you. Uh, consider the number of uh, downloads it has had so far. So a lot of exciting stuff happening uh, at, at Brocade, uh, both from the SAN uh, perspective and uh, data center IP uh, perspective. Uh, at our booth, we are showcasing int integration, OpenStack integration with all of these solutions, fiber channel SAN, um, Ethernet uh, Fabrics, Load Balancer, uh, and Virtual uh, Router. So please stop by. Uh, to, to get a little uh, uh, demo on all of these. Uh, so, Samir, why don't you uh, give, give the audience uh, a background uh, about cloud networking and what Rackspace is, is doing uh, in that respect? Sure. Um, so our network services portfolio is basically listed here. We started uh, with what we call as cloud networks last year in September or October. Um, currently, we have basic layer two to layer three services, which includes private networking between virtual machines, what we call as isolated networks. Um, we also have um, attaching, detaching network capabilities, broadcast and multicast capabilities on private networks. Um, and we have the uh, firewall and VPN router capabilities now with the Brocade via V router. We are still running Nova network, actually, with the quantum or what used to be called quantum. Um, and we are transitioning to Neutron uh, early part of next year. And we are going to offer security groups um, uh, functions, as well as we're looking at floating IP and various layer four through layer seven services as part of the public cloud. But this is what uh, we have right now. Um, so you were talking about some of the technologies, but how are these offered? And when you're talking about these offerings, um, can you t also touch upon the topic de jure uh, network function virtualization? Sure, yeah. I, I think you mentioned the uh, network functions virtualization. That's a, a standard term being used for uh, most of the layer 4 through layer 7 services uh, nowadays. So there's several ways uh, we can think of when it comes to offering layer 4 through layer 7 services. And when we say hybrid cloud, uh, at Rackspace, we have a dedicated or managed hosting offering as well, as well as cloud. So when customers consume these services, uh, layer 4 through layer 7 services or all network services, um, either in the dedicated space, 
they'll have a dedicated firewall uh, or a load balancer or any of those physical appliances. That's one way that they uh, would like to uh, consume these services. On the cloud side, there's a couple of ways to do it. Uh, they, would, they could be a service virtual machine, uh, which is customers want to log, uh, create a VM network appliance, just like a server, they would want to spin up a, a network appliance, virtual machine, and be able to log into that virtual machine and make all the changes for the networking. The other uh, way to consume the services is as a service natively in OpenStack, we have VPN as a service, firewall as a service, all of those being uh, pushed through the OpenStack community right now. Um, and that's another way of consuming layer four to layer seven services. Customers do not uh, need to be logging into the network appliance. They just want to use API or the user interface in order to get these services. And the last way, I think, is basically, I mean, network functions virtualization, which is the term that's being used right now, it is also uh, going in the path of distributed uh, uh, services, like which are offered on from, which can be done on the hypervisor itself or at various distributed points in the network. Right. So that's a different. Absolutely. Um, so why don't we? back up a little and um, give a very high level view of what were the use cases that uh, customers were uh, coming up to you with uh, and, and what was the business problem that you were uh, trying to solve uh, for them? So you, um, these are, you just saw all the services that we offer. Uh, we have private network connectivity between virtual machines and for some, for let's say there's a web application deployment with various web servers, database servers. If we want to protect these web servers, or if the database servers and the app servers need to connect to the internet but want to be secure and not expose their uh, interfaces to the public, uh, that's one of the use cases that we were trying to solve. Uh, the other one is, you know, we have different regions in Rackspace. We just launched our Hong Kong uh, data center. Uh, this week, I think, uh, and yeah, basically we, we are all uh, wondering whether it's Monday, Tuesday, or, or Saturday today. Right? And yeah, and <laughs> so customers would like to be able to, uh, I guess, connect multiple data centers in Rackspace, or even dedicated, um, uh, I mean, different regions or from customer data centers to the cloud. So that's the other uh, thing that customers are looking for, either for disaster recovery purposes or just uh, to span their applications. Disaster recovery is more of the common use case, um, or uh, just for connectivity between virtual machines across regions. The other one which is not mentioned here is uh, routing between private networks. So let's say there's an app uh, application which needs to be on multiple networks. Some servers are on network A, the other one is on network B, and they want connectivity between those. That's another use case. And the last one is uh, remote access uh, or client VPN services. Basically, the secure traffic between sites can also be routed, and so that's uh, the, yeah. the variant that uh, you touched upon, right? right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Sashi, was this, uh, were these use cases um, common uh, um, with other service providers that you were talking to, and did you have to uh, look at it from a different angle for Rackspace? Tell us a little bit about how you went about. Sure, absolutely, yeah. Sandy. Yeah, uh, for Viara, this is a, for for our current generation of product. This is a perfect use case uh, as a tenant router in the cloud service provider environment, uh, where we can. It's a different model. We're uh, spinning off Viara, providing those uh, layer three services per tenant. So let me just give you a brief introduction of uh, what Viara is for people in the audience that don't know. It's essentially a software form factor. It's a router that. Uh, provides uh, routing, uh, BGP, OSPF, uh, IPsec VPN, remote access VPN, uh, and uh, NAT firewall capabilities. So it's essentially all these services in one software form factor. Uh, so with, uh, we've seen uh, what the use cases are, what the requirements are from a Rackspace perspective, right? Uh, they were trying to provide uh, segregation uh, security for uh, applications, for their customer applications. Uh, they needed uh, 
uh, uh, this functionality per tenant, per customer, uh, and this could be uh, generalized over other use cases uh, per department within one large enterprise. Uh, so you can see that uh, Viata here is acting as a gateway router. Uh, with NAT, you hide the applications behind Viata and you expose the public interface of Viata uh, to the internet and, and apply firewall policies to protect uh, the, uh, the applications behind or expose uh, uh, the applications as, as you wish to uh, external traffic. Uh, that is one use case and that's uh, generally uh, the similar use case across other uh, service providers that uh, we work with. Um, the uh, second use case here in the, in the picture that you see is uh, to, trying to connect two sites. Uh, here in the Rackspace use case, there are two regions uh, that we're trying to connect up, two regions of the same customer maybe. Uh, they want to secure the traffic between those two sites. But if you really think about it, this can be extended uh, to uh, other uh, larger use cases, meaning you have a connectivity between your branch office or your headquarters and your um, uh, rack space environment. Uh, or it could be between uh, rack space and AWS, where we also uh, play a uh, the same kind of, provide the same kind of functionality. So this is a true hybrid uh, uh, cloud kind of a connectivity here. Um, the third one, of course, uh, is kind of a, an extension. We are providing secure access to the applications uh, using SSL, VPN. So uh, all of these um, can be with or without uh, dynamic routing. So, but we can actually do dynamic routing, and we can do that over the VPN tunnel. So it's very flexible uh, to provide that connected connectivity at the same time uh, securing uh, the traffic. And th this, again, uh, is a common general use case, and that's why we fit quite nicely uh, to provide those functionalities. Right. Um, so, Sashi, you were talking about um, uh, how some of these use cases are pretty common with uh, other um, service providers. So, Samir, uh, what, what is the, the, the value pro proposition? What is the differentiation of rack space where other service providers are you know, having similar use cases and they're resolving um, that through, uh, through routing and virtual uh, solutions? What, what is that you do different and how is your offerings uh, um, uh, working for the customers? Yeah, so I talked about the various uh, ways in which these services can be offered. And we, here we're talking about offering layer 4 through layer 7 services on a virtual machine that's created. So a customer needs to spin up a network appliance uh, as a server. We recently launched performance flavors, uh, which is basically our uh, of next generation, if you will, of uh, uh, cloud uh, flavor offerings. What, what this basically does is that Viata can be uh, provisioned on these performance flavors and it gives us uh, gives bandwidth flexibility for customers to choose from. So if they choose like a one gig performance class, they can get 200 megabits per second bandwidth uh, if they, and they can uh, go all the way to 1.6 gigabits per second uh, with different flavor sizes that we offer in our cloud today. And all of these are, as you can see, the uh, on a monthly basis they, that starts from $160. Um, but the real value, as I said, is that you know the bandwidth can scale up pretty quickly at very little cost. And a lot of our customers who want uh, high bandwidth capabilities and uh, they can use, they can pick and choose from these flavors and at not much cost relative to other uh, cloud hosting providers. So. Performance flavors, along with you know, uh, Viata's different use cases. That's kind of what we saw. Um, solve here. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Um, so shifting gears and talking a little more about uh, technology and the solution. Uh, I was discussing this with uh, Yahoo Japan uh, on Tuesday as well. That OpenStack is is soon becoming a, a, a collaboration platform where 
vendors and customers are, are changing their relationship from just uh, right. you know, transactional to true partnership. So this question is really for both of you. How did you come together um, uh, in, in, in coming up with the, with the solution and maybe add some more um, uh, details uh, on the technology and uh, the work that uh, you know, the, both the teams did? Sure, so from technical perspective, basically, um, we, we use Nova Network right now, and as I said, we're transitioning to Neutron. But from the, uh, the technical work the requirements perspective, uh, we had a Brocade we had to develop a Nova, a Nova agent for, uh, so that they can um, boot, our, boot their system in, in our cloud. This Nova agent uh, used file injection API uh, from Nova, which is, I think, right now being deprecated for uh, config drive and cloud in it. But since Brocade was one of the earliest to do software-defined networking virtual machines, we went with uh, doing a Nova agent with uh, file injection capabilities. And this is required because it need, like, if the VM needs to come up in our cloud, they need to read the IP addressing information on all um, that is provided and come up with the right IP addressing information, the right interfaces, the right order of VMs. So that's basically developing the agent with, uh, was the main portion of the work, integration work that happened. Um, and on our hypervisors. Yeah. Uh, Sashi, you wanted to add? Yeah, sure. Uh, it, it is indeed a different paradigm, uh, uh, especially because uh, it's no longer uh, the requirements coming from the customer and the vendor uh, trying to fulfill those requirements in, in, in a certain order and you know, getting that out in a release out in a certain time frame. It's more about a partnership, as Sandeep mentioned. So we uh, had to have um, you, you can't just write a product requirements document uh, and say, okay, this is what I need to build. Uh, we had to have an engineer uh, work very close uh, in the rack space environment to do the actual development. And this uh, is not new for Viara. We've done that uh, a couple of times, where, and we, we continue to do that uh, because each environment is, is unique. Uh, each uh, of these uh, cloud service providers uh, have a different deployment model. Uh, their, their hypervisors are, are uh, made for that environment, uh, are built for that environment. Uh, so uh, it, we had to work very close um, in, in lockstep order with them uh, to uh, fulfill these requirements. Uh, just a, a little bit on what we had to do for Viara um, is that um, when Viara boots up, uh, now this is probably a little bit different from the application VMs. Uh, we are, uh, the Viara router is, it is a router, so we need to have an IP, uh, IP address um, as, as we uh, come up or, you know, we, we boot completely. Uh, also, uh, the few configuration uh, parameters that we need before or, or a lot, uh, during the bootstrap is actually um, uh, turn on DHCP service uh, on the interface, uh, uh, have some SSH keys, uh, push some SSH keys. Uh, so once the Viara boots up con completely, uh, the, um, the administrator can go in and uh, configure other uh, services, such as firewall, VPN, and so on. Uh, and the uh, third thing is to just have a default user. So these are uh, basic parameters that we need to uh, push to Viara as it's uh, uh, booting up, and that's what uh, Samir was uh, referring to. So we, we just had to tweak uh, that a bit uh, in order for that to happen, uh, and that specifically in, in their environment. So once uh, Viara boots up, then uh, we can uh, SSH to it, or we can use REST API or any other uh, a couple of other ways to, to be able to push the actual uh, layer three services configuration onto Viata. Okay, excellent. Oh, I, one, one thing that I forgot to add on when you ask for differ differentiation is, I mean, I, uh, in other clouds, when you offer the brocade or any other network appliances, they're supported, not supported by the cloud hosting provider, but go to the vendors to support right. it. In right. Rackspace, this is actually part of our standard support. Of Fanatical support, right? So yeah, <laughs> just add to, add to add a plug for that. Exactly, yeah. exactly, absolutely. Um, why don't uh, I, I take this opportunity to open uh, the floor for questions? Uh, uh, anyone in the audience have uh, a question to ask our panelists here? 
So while you're thinking about some questions, let me uh, put a, yes, please. Do you want to uh, repeat the question first for no, the... Uh, yeah, I'll repeat the question. I think you're saying um, upgrading from Nova network to Brocade is a big change, and why did we do this over Contrail and other solutions? So basically, uh, let me clarify one thing. Uh, our networking is... This is what we have right now. Is we are showing how we are offering a service to customers for routing, VPN, firewall, these capabilities. Our network is still based on, it's public knowledge that we, our networking is based on VMware's uh, or Nicira's controller. So that's not changing. This is, this is just a service that we are offering as a VM inside that environment. It's not. So, so I mean, can you also touch upon, you know, uh, market places and how you, uh, go? So, so essentially this is networking service that's provided right. To the end tenant, and so you want right. to add a little so bit. So it's not like our networking is based on Viata. This is a VM in the in a network appliance offering inside our cloud. So as uh, eventually, what we want to do is there's a lot more layer four through layer seven services than just routing, VPN, and firewall. So if you're familiar with uh, AWS Marketplace. Um, there's a lot of network appliances that are part of that. So Rackspace is looking at doing a marketplace in which there's not, not only uh, uh, you know, routing, VPN, firewall, these kind of functions, but there's several functions like web application firewall, DDoS prevention, uh, WAN optimization. There's so many other functions that need to be uh, part of these layer 4 through layer 7 services. So eventually we'll get there. Uh, but you know, this is just one of the offerings. You know, all the list of offerings that I mentioned. Mm -hmm. So, routing, VPN, firewall, WAF, DDoS, WAN optimization, and so I think maybe you're misunderstanding what. So, uh, the was version. your question about uh, upgrading uh, the OpenStack version and what it does to Viara, uh, which uh, maybe you should answer? No, I think uh, that's that's fine. I think yeah. he, he, is, is that what was that your question? Because it's two independent things. Yeah. Uh, it was just a matter of timing. We've been we've been around forever. Go ahead. Um, say what she we just said. <laughs> okay, I, I so, gave him the answer. Yeah. Sure. yeah, I think this is an. I think you're. Fundamental assumption is that we are, our network is based on Brocade, which is not the right. Yeah. What you're assuming is wrong. Yeah. Our network is, uh, the technology that we use in our network is SDN based off of VMware's Nicira offering. Yeah. I saw, uh, I saw another question from, from here yeah. somewhere. Oh. Yeah, I mean, sh we obviously we are looking. Repeat the question, so yeah, okay. if you could, that would be helpful. Okay, the question is: Are we are you looking at SRIOV, DPDK, and some of these other advanced technologies going forward in our public cloud? So, I'm not sure how many people are familiar with SRIOV and all that, but I can quickly. When you talk about a software-defined networking, uh, currently the majority of the ways uh, the providers how it's implemented when SDN, with the help of a controller, is you have open virtual switch on the hypervisor, and the controller basically establishes a session with the hypervisor. And OVS, or the virtual switch, is where all the flows or the traffic forwarding decisions get pushed down from the controller. Um, there are other ways in which, you know, in order to increase the performance or improve the latency of the network, uh, you can. Uh, architect the uh, network in different ways. So SRIOV is one such way. 
in which you know the hypervisor uh, OVS on the hypervisor is not actually doing the forwarding uh, decisions, but rather it's basically every tenant is handing off a specific VLAN, and all the decisions might be made at the top of racks, which uh, and there we can do a VXLAN uh, handoff from there uh, to the network. So that's that's where I mean that's something that we we are constantly evaluating. Uh, we have a huge network, and you know we have various cells uh, in our network, various layer two domains. So definitely we look at look at all of those technologies, but we have a huge incumbent network with uh, existing provide, SDN provider that we have to keep in mind. Um, Sashi, did you also want to, to um, talk about uh, what are some of the future enhancements with uh, Brocade VR, V router, and how, uh, sure. what direction uh, it's going at? Yeah, so uh, as I mentioned, our current product is the VR subscription edition, and it's a, a tenant, the use case is mainly as a tenant router uh, as a, a, in a in cloud service provider environment. Uh, but what we are working on uh, is uh, a router, the next uh, generation product, it's uh, again called a virtual router. There's a little bit of a lack of imagination there, but uh, it's uh, purely for uh, network fu functions virtualization. And when I say uh, network functions virtualization, that can mean many things to, again, just like SDN, uh, many things to many people. But for the Viara, uh, in the Viara sense, it's uh, purely for the service provider space, uh, where uh, high performance, high scale uh, is uh, key. Uh, and so uh, we'll be focusing on um, uh, basing the VR on Intel DPDK architecture and some of the technology that uh, we've talked about, SRIOV, where we are bypassing the NIC, uh, excuse me, the virtual switch and connecting the VR inf interface directly to the physical NIC. Uh, but again, some of the uh, use cases here are pretty narrow. It will be purely routing, uh, routing with scale. Uh, for example, a BGP route reflector use case. Uh, so uh, this is essentially what we are working on. Okay. okay. Any, any questions from this side of uh, the room? Okay, let's, let's move back to the middle. Uh, the gentleman in the back, please. Can you, can you speak a little louder, please? How do you deal with the failure of the service VMs? Okay. So we do... Uh, ah, oh. Repeat the... I, I can repeat that. How do you Sorry, uh, yeah. deal how with do the... We, how do we deal with failures of the router? Um, I would like to say that uh, Viata has been around for quite a lot of time. A lot of users, about um, over a million downloads of the software, so we are very, very stable. <laughs> uh, but uh, we do support uh, HA, uh, VRRP. Uh, and we can have active standby configuration. Um, although, again, uh, this is a unique environment, uh, service provider, the cloud service provider environment, depending on uh, what they support. For example, in AWS, uh, we, uh, it, it's a little bit more uh, convoluted to run a VRRP, so we have to, do, uh, have to provide uh, some other mechanisms based on that, that environment. And in Rackspace, um, we can do VRRP, I believe, because they do support. It, it depends on whether they support multicast, for example, for the keeper lives. Uh, even though that's not um, a limitation, we can do certain things like maybe do a, a GRE tunnel. But um, the, uh, just to briefly say that uh, the environment defines how we provide the high availability. So, I mean, did you want to add a little more color to it? So, Viata does support, Brocade Viata, Vrouter supports VRRP. Uh, but from Neutron, we need this uh, function called shared IP or virtual IP, which can basically transfer between virtual machines. Um, we are going to get that functionality early part of next year. So once we get that, and with the help of VRRP, it's just a data plane failover. One we are, currently, it's not su uh, supported in Rackspace Cloud. So uh, we have a, a customer, uh, in a, a cloud service provider, in Japan, uh, NS Solutions, uh, and they have a similar tenant uh, use case, and they use uh, VRRP in their environment to provide high availability. Okay, excellent. Uh, the gentleman in, in the white uh, t shirt, please. I wonder if you plan to use the uh, uh, VPN as a service uh, API from Neutron or, or even uh, yeah. uh, firewalling as a service. 
So, so the question is really... Um, the question you know, is, can, do we plan to use VPN as a service right. and firewall as a service? Uh, from uh, from yeah. Neutron perspective. Right. So, yes, we do plan to do that. And our next wave uh, of services that we plan to offer includes floating IP security groups, layer 4 through layer 7 services. Uh, we need to run an L3 agent, which is the L3 uh, net networking agent extension, right? So that's where we are figuring out the architecture currently, where where to run that agent and uh, what model we are going to use for those layer four through layer one services. But yeah, definitely our intent is to provide those services natively in using the OpenStack API. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Sameer, um, um Um, we we used to support it. We repeat the question. Oh, uh, sorry, does uh, Viada support? Uh, Viada used to support cluster HA. Do we still support it? Uh, we have moved away from that uh, because it's um, a little bit more complicated, and there were some issues with it. So uh, today we do uh, uh, active standby HA. I know. The audience has a lot of questions. I, I want to get to one question real quick, uh, which, which is very intriguing. Um, you went through all these uh, use cases, right? Uh, which particular use case uh, is, is most common uh, and something that you really want to talk about uh, a little more? Yeah, the side-to-side -side VPN uh, for connecting between regions or from a customer data center to Rackspace, that's one of the most commonly deployed uh, use cases that we're seeing from customers. For example, there was a customer who has who was running a MongoDB cluster, and he's sharding from like his local data center um, into Rackspace uh, cloud uh, across the site-to-site -site VPN, uh, and because it's also, I guess, secure, that's a very good use case. That I mean, site-to-site -site VPN is the most common use case, mm -hmm. okay. followed by I, I would say if there is the second most common is the firewall use case. Okay. Uh, that's uh, okay. which provides network-based firewall services and can secure the web application. Okay, excellent. Um, please. Uh, since Yana is a VM training set of VM, uh, real guarantee performance in terms of throughput and bandwidth for your clients. Repeat the question. I, I think that's so probably. Can repeat the oh, yeah, yeah. The <laughs> question is how do we guarantee the throughput? I mean. The word guarantee, when you use it in cloud, that's like a very dangerous term. I don't think any customer actually guarantees, like, but we have certain SLAs that we try to meet. And uh, when you go- Guarantee is a relative the, term, SLAs. Uh, if you go back to the, uh, how do we guarantee it? Yeah, we have built capacity in our clouds with the right amount of um, oversubscription built in, and we've modeled, and we have a, um, I mean, our design of top of rack aggregation core, it, considers how many VMs are part of the, can be on each hypervisor, and then we build uh, bottoms up based on that. And also, historically, we have a view of how many um, customers are sending what amount of bandwidth. So using bottoms up approach, as well as you know data from what we have learned, um, we do uh, guarantee, well, not guarantee, but we, we offer, this is the, uh, like different flavors can do different amounts of bandwidth. Right, SLAs, right. So, um, Sashi, um, some other conversations that you're having with the, um, you know, Rackspace and other um, service provider customers, what are the SLA discussions uh, you're seeing? Yeah, uh, so uh, the, the whole uh, performance throughput uh, conversation is a little bit different, uh, is, and uh, especially in the virtual environment. Uh, we. Um, if, if it was a proprietary uh, appliance, um, I, I come from that word, if it, uh, world. If it's a hardware appliance, we know exactly what we've built. Uh, we can characterize that very easily and provide all these uh, nice numbers on a data sheet. But when we go into this virtual uh, environment, and especially a cloud service environment, uh, it's a much more difficult task. Um, because uh, we are running on uh, an x86 server, uh, which may or may not have hypervisors. Uh, there are uh, driver dependencies. Um, so, I mean, we can do, uh, what we do inside Viara is we characterize on certain platforms, on a server, on certain NICs, uh, with certain drivers, uh, 
tuned to the highest performance. Uh, and then we give that as a baseline in the lab in under ideal conditions. Um, and uh, then we guide customers uh, as to you know, what the throughput and, um, may be in their environment on their servers you know, and, and so on. So th there's, there's, a, there's actually a lot that has to happen in that conversation. Right, right. Um, any, any other uh, questions uh, that, that come to your mind? Uh, any any final thoughts, uh, Sashi and uh, Samir, uh, that you wanted to uh, share? Go Rackspace. <laughs> Fanatical support. <laughs> so I would uh, encourage you to, we are available uh, on Marketplace in AWS and of course uh, in Rackspace, so please go give us a try and don't see what go, you Don't think. go to AWS. <laughs> I so, knew I would get in trouble. Exactly, exactly. Uh, thank you so much, Samir, for you know taking this time and, and sharing uh, uh, your thoughts, and, and likewise, uh, Sashi, for uh, doing thank that. You. Thanks, thank, for thank, thanks for uh, being here, folks. <laughs> <laughs>